everybody. I'm uh, Riccardo Gagliarducci. And that's a bicycle race. Who has used uh, the Blender game engine in the last year? <laughs> Few people. Well, the, this is an amazing part of Blender. And uh, we are using now to present interactive uh, real-time 3D graphics for the television. And uh, now we have a real demo going on because uh, a friend is uh, cycling around uh, here in Vondel Park, and we can uh, follow uh, his uh, movements right. He's moving, his name is uh, Eduardo, that's why the E goes there. And uh, he's taking the GPS uh, raw GPS signals from him, and we are moving the marker uh, in uh, real time. So I'm connected to a server that, it goes, uh, that uh, gives me the lat uh, latitude and longitude. This is a, a flat uh, part of the map of Amsterdam. Um, it was quite easy because there are no height in uh, this uh, country. And, uh, <laughs> You see, he's uh, going, now he's in the uh, river. Uh, <laughs> why? Because this is a raw GPS signal. Um, if you uh, look uh, in some uh, app, uh, your signal, this signal is may, uh, often filtered. So it is snapped to the street. Uh, it has a prediction on uh, where you will be the next second, and so it seems a smooth movement. But in fact, it, it is not at all a smooth. And one more uh, thing, if you take the, the map from uh, uh, our map service, and you try to put it in a Blender game engine, and you receive the GPS signal, the cursor won't go in the correct position. We will see later why. But this is a special uh, map. And uh, you see, we, we welcome Eduardo. Thank you very much. Uh, now you can take a rest. Thank you. And so we, he reached the Bali. How the story begin? Uh, wait, still alpha. Four years ago, we built a web app uh, that uh, shows uh, territorial data, uh, makes uh, some analysis and calculation about this data, and uh, this uh, job uh, went uh, really, uh, really well, and. Um, um, and we showed uh, he, this, uh, this app uh, to our clients and uh, our colleagues. So uh, everyone was convinced that we knew everything about GIS, spatial visualization, and uh, interactivity. A, coll a colleague came to me, are you interested in a job with Blender? It's just about uh, scripting in the Blender game engine, receiving GPS real-time uh, coordinates, showing it on a three-dimensional map, so put some markers, uh, allow user, some user to control the point of view, and to provo pro provide contents, three-dimensional map of all Italy. Uh, then he said to me, are you able to do the job? And I say, no, not at all. <laughs> so you are telling me that uh, you are accepting the job. Yes, of course, I am accepting this job. After, uh, after this, we discovered that was uh, for the Giro d'Italia, the Tour of Italy, 
the Tour of Italy is uh, along with uh, the, the Tour de France, uh, La Vuelta in uh, Spain, one of the main uh, male stage uh, race uh, competition. And uh, in Italy is broadcasted by RAI, the national Italian television. Uh, each uh, stage was uh, shown by two million people each day and uh, with an average share of 18%. It's quite a lot of people. And um, uh, it's 100 years that this uh, competition exists and in the first edition that we contribute, uh, the edition of uh, 2016, the first three uh, stages were in uh, Holland. Who are the people uh, involved in this uh, work? First of all, Giro d'Italia, that uh, uh, cha um, uh, gave the responsibility to MicroPlus uh, of uh, all the broadcast, the data management, the timing, and um, the, the final broadcast. Uh, Arca Studios, uh, in the name of uh, Riccardo Covino, that some of you may remember, um, did uh, a huge uh, part that was used for uh, uh, some, uh, some years, but uh, in the, um, two years ago, uh, they, he asked us, uh, Brixel, Riccardo, Luca and Federica, to uh, provide an additional visualization. That is what you're seeing here uh, in the back. This is a real uh, stage. And uh, we had two people that uh, helped us uh, to uh, complete the work. That is uh, Stefano Pensa. Uh, without him, it wouldn't be possible, uh, this, uh, uh, the, the creation of this content, who um, uh, mixed together um, them data, uh, digital elevation model, open street map data and uh, uh, all uh, in uh, GIS software and Alice that helped us with the modeling. How it works? Uh, MicroPlus uh, de developed a software that collects all the data timing events, database, uh, archive with all the names of the teams, of the athletes, uh, uh, where, when they are born and uh, how they are tall. And so. um, input, manual input, um, uh, and um, also receive input from the, uh, f some physical button that exists uh, uh, close to the TV director uh, during the live stream. It also received the GPS transponder that is uh, 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 things that uh, there is uh, under the seat of uh, each bike. And uh, it gives us uh, the X and Y position, uh, lo uh, latitude and longitude. This uh, software controls Blender game engine. And uh, a little bit uh, what I'm doing now with a remote controller uh, and uh, what uh, we have been doing with Eduardo. We are controlling remotely the Blender game engine. The Blender game engine output uh, the stream that goes uh, uh, we, um, together with the live stream in the video mixer uh, with, um, and the TV director decide what to show and flows in the television broadcast in the internet, uh, and uh, the main uh, broadcast was done by Rai Sport. How uh, Blender Game Engine can uh, uh, support this, uh, this output? The Blender Game Engine was uh, uh, modified in three principal parts. Uh, alpha support, uh, the his uh, output is uh, dual with uh, key and uh, fill uh, output, interlaced output, and uh, fixed frame rate. So we cannot have a delay like, like in a video game, but we have a, a deadline each 20 milliseconds. So all the calculation should stop 
uh, before uh, 20 milliseconds passed. Let's see a little bit of the final result. This is a part of the um, uh, stream, and uh, the caption that you are seeing on the top left and uh, on the bottom is Blender. There is uh, our uh, Blender scenes uh, superimposed in uh, in the stream. The um, everything is controlled by scenes and markers. Um, each marker defines the start of animation, the pose of animation, and the ending of animation. Uh, Graph Plus, the software that controls Blender, is also uh, the one that uh, is uh, constantly updating the texture. What you are seeing here is uh, an updating texture that switched, uh, switch, and uh, provide the correct content. There are a lot of type of uh, um, scenes. They are, uh, there are a, a huge amount of scenes that we are seeing. And this one is uh, the one of the 2000, say, no, this one of, of the, was of 2017, the last, uh, um, the last day, the last uh, edition. And uh, this is uh, uh, the special scene we built. Uh, so you can see in real time the position of the bike and um, on a three-dimensional map. Oh, I'm sorry, I switched. The, let's see if we can continue. We can see on the real time. So we, uh, the, mm, the, uh, the viewer can evaluate uh, if uh, how how are the team uh, how are the team in that moment. This is another uh, um, ranking done by uh, a scene of uh, in Blender. And in the last uh, edition, we also added. Now we will see in a second uh, an additional. Um, uh, frames in which you can put the live stream. And uh, this is uh, the one, two, three, four. Those are four scene, Blender scenes uh, composed together in this, uh, um, in this scene, in this total scene. Uh, a demonstration of these uh, frames is this. You are seeing it uh, real time. So uh, one scene is uh, looking at the target that is uh, three-dimensional and is pointing uh, the arrow. The other uh, marker is not present, so the arrow is uh, is gone. Now let's see what are the main, the important uh, uh, challenge that we have to face to complete this kind of work. First, as I told you before, is projection. So this is a map of Amsterdam, and on the left you see the map represented in a Cartesian plane, as uh, in Blender, but with geographical coordinates. Geographical coordinates are expressed in degree. That means 4.8 degree from, from Greenwich and uh, 52 degree from Equator. Um, this is called uh, um, World Geographic System, and uh, it cannot be represented on uh, flat uh, surfaces because it's a spherical representation. As uh, and as you know, we can, it's it's impossible to perfectly unwrap a sphere on a plane. So we have to project it in uh, some different uh, way. We picked one that you see on the right is called Universal Transverse Mercator and divides the globe in 60 parts. This is the number 31. When we are in Italy, uh, we are using the 32 or 33. And uh, the uh, angles in that case are preserved. You, you pick the projection, 
you pick the projection, uh, a different projection if you want to maintain distances, if you want to maintain angles, or, or if you want to maintain uh, surface areas. These locally preserve angles. So that means that you, you f if you measure an angle, is as represented in the map. So the, the right one is what we called the correct one. Then, this is a nice uh, uh, challenge that we have to face. Uh, personally, I have to face it because I developed this software twice. The first uh, times I developed, I developed and it worked so smoothly. I sent almost almost everything. I sent to the client and he said to me, no, it doesn't work. Why it doesn't work? Because it should run in a Blender game engine. So in Blender game engine, no mu module named BPI. Once I was aware of this, I had to redevelop everything to work with the game engine. And I asked myself why there is this uh, kind of division. One of the answers I gave myself is performance. The same calculation in a blender uh, was, uh, was uh, um, done in uh, like 18 milliseconds average. In the Blender game engine, two or three milliseconds. It takes two or three milliseconds to compute this. So I am uh, really relaxed with the 20 milliseconds uh, deadline. The creation of each stage is quite complex. Everything starts from a GPX file that is an XML uh, list of points that we take, we put in a GIS software, um, we collect OpenStreet uh, data. You can see there is a river, and from other open data, we um, collect also the urbanization, that is the gray part. All the um, village, uh, the city, and uh, little town are drawn gray. And, um, and then we take digital elevation model data. Everything, every stuff that we collect, we have to project in UTM uh, projection. So it, it fits all together. Then we make some uh, uh, work, and then we have the final result. Um, Camera movements. The camera movements uh, is the, the setup is quite uh, easy, uh, and uh, we just define um, the distance from a target. The director can choose a target, can pick a target, uh, the rotation, and the height. And then we do all the trigonometry to find the correct uh, camera position. With interpolation, you can have quite a uh, um, nice movement. And um, the setup is really easy. Another problem was the level, level of deta detail. One stage is 150, 200 uh, kilometers long. The bounding box can be more than 100 kilometers. Uh, the precision that we want is 20 meters. So you, we uh, quickly reach uh, 30 million vertex and even more. So we uh, create a map with a level of detail, a kind of level of detail, very precise, close to the path, that is the uh, gold one. And uh, um, as you go further, there are uh, uh, less and less uh, vertex because we are not interested in what is very, very far. But the, the street is a, uh, the path is a precision of 20 meters. How is uh, calculating the, the Z? The Z is, uh, 
in fact sent with the GPS signal, but it's a fake. It has a precision or plus or minus 100 meters, so we cannot really trust it. Uh, so we used a library, uh, exceptional library, Pi Q3, uh, and we take the rod that is a separate mesh. We insert in this uh, quad tree and we retrieve the uh, just the triangles that we need to check for intersection. Then we can uh, send a ray and uh, in 20, uh, 20 triangles maximum and we, found, we find the exact intersection. It's a really nice function in uh, Blender Game Engine. And uh, Last uh, challenge, first, geographical dimension. I already um, told you some numbers, but uh, to see, seeing it is more, uh, uh, is more nice. This is uh, one marker that you are seeing here. And the bike, a real bike, is uh, so small. So the, everything has to be very, very big. Um, to the creation of the place names, you see every town has its own uh, uh, place names, is done starting from JPX that uh, has a track point and waypoint, so I have the name of the town is passing by. We create a CSV and we split the workflow. Uh, Photoshop action is giving me all the PNG file with a nice shadow, uh, nice uh, font. And uh, we put it uh, back in Blender with a Python script uh, that uh, uh, repeat the same uh, uh, process that we saw to place correctly the uh, marker and the place names uh, at the correct height. And then you have all the names along the path. To close, uh, what uh, is uh, missing or what uh, um, could uh, facilitate this kind of uh, work? Uh, first of all, huge coordinate support. Uh, there are some problems when I try to edit a point that is uh, like uh, uh, 50,000 and something kilometers uh, away from zero. Uh, Blender has some issue. Um, and um, another part that could be really nice uh, to improve is uh, an easy database connection. We uh, try to put every part of Italy in a Postgres, PostGIS database, but then we have troubles. Uh, so um, now each stage is a blend file, a separate blend file. And uh, in the Blender game engine, it's mainly three part, the mask, uh, working mask material, uh, currently there are some issues, uh, custom output, so the possibility to have an alpha uh, interlaced and maybe a fixed frame rate uh, uh, option, and basic uh, Bezier. Uh, there are some uh, kind of uh, Bezier that uh, we can use, but was, was not uh, feasible in this uh, occasion. And the last part that is missing, that uh, I think uh, everybody is uh, really interested in it, is uh, BGV, that is uh, the uh, integration of uh, all the work that is, uh, that is being done in, uh, for uh, EV in the Blender uh, game engine. Thank you. And uh, and uh, thank you to Eduardo. Bye.